people, welcome back to my channel. So yes, we're moving on to the next frequently asked questions. Um, you can check these out, the full-fledged answer at um, the AMTA website, which I'll leave down below. Um, the thing is though, I figured that most of my um, demographic here did not wanna read the whole book of answers. So I figured I'd share them um, in a more fun way. And so uh, we left off at how is music therapy utilized in hospitals? That's my uh, specialty. I love working in hospitals so much. Um, the, one of the benefits of being a music therapist at a hospital is that you are a hospital staff and you get hospital benefits and it's wonderful. <laughs> so, but, um, but in a hospital, you either have um, group if you're full-time part-time sometimes you have individual sessions with patients sometimes you have group sessions with patients and sometimes you have a mix of both um, and you are usually you fall under the creative arts therapy department if it's a larger hospital then you fall under the music therapy department I had the wonderful experience of doing both, being part of the creative arts therapy department in one facility and then being part of the music therapy department in another. I prefer um, being a part of the music therapy department because it's a lot easier to spin off ideas. When you're in a creative arts therapy department, a lot of times it's like you and a speech therapist or you and an art therapist and it's kind of hard to like bounce ideas off of one another. Like you work together but you can't really like bounce ideas off of each other so that's how it works in a hospital I love working in hospitals <laughs> next one is how is music therapy utilized in nursing homes um, it's sort of the same way individual sessions group sessions um, if I think about nursing homes here, they're not very large. So sometimes it's like just you and you're the program coordinator. Sometimes you'll, you'll be lucky if it's like creative arts and there's like two of you. Um, but it does depend on the like length of the establishment. If you're working in a nursing home that does like all three types of care, you know, they go from like long-term care all the way to hospice, then you will or you might be on the hospice unit um, as a music therapist. Um, you kind of have that in hospitals too, but if the hospital's like larger, a lot of times they'll like kind of focus you on one sort of population. Whereas like a nur the nursing, so, I'm sorry, the hospitals here are large. So a music therapist in the hospital here has one specific department that they're looking at. Whereas the nursing home, usually you're looking at the whole nursing home because the nursing home's not that large. Th this is like how I'm thinking about it. Each place is a little bit different um, depending on where you live. How is music therapy utilized in schools? Actually, I've never seen music therapy used in public school. I've never seen music therapy used in private schools either. I've seen music therapy used in schools that specialize in children with a specific disorder. And oftentimes, if you're a music therapist in that particular type of school, uh, you're usually per diem. You'll come and you'll see maybe a couple of students and then you'll leave. Um, that was not what I was taught in school. Like when I was going and becoming a music therapist, um, I was taught that you're full time at school and you participate in um, the types of plans like you go to meetings about the children and you meet with the parents and the treatment team. I've never come across that practicing though, <laughs> but I mean, it's wishful thinking. Uh, how is music therapy utilized in psychiatric facilities? Uh, he, okay, where I live, uh, usually the psychiatric facility is 
with the hospital. So like I said, you're a music therapist in a hospital and maybe you work in the psychiatric department. <laughs> um, psychiatric facilities though, I've never had experience working in a said psychiatric facility. I've only had experience working in the psychiatric department of a larger organization. Um, however, I would assume that it's the same as a nursing home, whereas if it's a smaller psychiatric facility, you work with the whole facility, whereas if it's a larger psychiatric facility, maybe you're pinpointed to like one particular population, like the long-term care or the short-term care or the children or the adults. Um, yeah, there's a plenty of internship sites that have psychiatric facilities as the place, um, but I've never worked in one. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, is music therapy a reimbursable service? Okay, actually, I don't know if any of you have looked up psychiatrists, but it's the same exact way. Uh, there, uh, especially where I live, um, there are barely any psychiatrists that take insurance. Um, and usually the psychiatrists that take insurance work for a larger organization, and that organization takes insurance. So music therapy is sort of the same way. Um, if you work for a hospital and that hospital takes your insurance, then great. Um, if you're an individual sole proprietor of a music therapy business, they probably won't take insurance. And um, yeah, so when I worked in a hospital, I think it was like, it's just like therapy, you know, like the insurance will approve like 20 sessions a year. And then if you want more than 20 sessions as the music therapist, you have to write a proposal stating why this patient, this patient's doing really well. And we want to continue the treatment. And these are the goals and objectives we have lined up for the continual treatment. So this is why this patient needs to have more sessions. And sometimes we'll say, yeah, sure, here's 20 extra sessions and sometimes they'll say no the patient has to pay full price out of pocket and then um, that's the way it is um so that's kind of how music therapy works um yeah if you're going to see a music therapist I recommend going to a facility that takes your insurance just like I would recommend if somebody was looking for a psychiatrist I would say the same thing um I wouldn't go to individual psychiatrists. I would go to a facility that accepts your insurance psychiatrist. Um, I understand that sometimes when you go through insurance, you don't get the best healthcare provider, but I don't know. These medical professionals, and myself included, we can charge as much as we possibly want for a session. And honestly, as a client, I don't want to... Um, pay whatever the provider wants. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, what is the American Music Therapy Association? The AMTA. That, that, these are the people that are giving us these questions. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an association um, and you pay for it and you go to conferences and you get continuing education credits. And sometimes if you're a member, you can find jobs on the website. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what is a typical music therapy session like? Oh, I talked about this in my last video. It goes like this. <laughs> okay, so if you're working with children, you would do a hello song. I prefer working with adults as a music therapist, so I do um, an opening song. And then you, the guide of the music therapy session, it's based on like musical preferences and the objectives because each patient has a goal and then you break that goal down into objectives. And then the patient, at least this is the way I do it, the patient has to meet the objective 80% then we can move on to the next objective. So like if we're, you know, we're at objective number one, then I'm going to incorporate the musical preferences and the objective of the patient in this part of the session. Then we're gonna reach like peak energy level. And then, and that's where like, we're gonna meet the objective. And then we're gonna come down, still kind of meeting the per objective, but we're gonna focus more on getting the patient ready for their next session. And then they're gonna do um, a closing song. If you do a children, you're gonna do a goodbye song. So that's like kind of how it works. Um, and yeah, so you're using the, let me state it one more time. <laughs> we are using the patient's musical preferences 
as and then incorporating that into the objective for the patient within the session um yeah that's kind of how it works that's that's how i do it uh what is the future of music therapy <sighs> where do I want the future of music therapy to go or what is the future of music therapy? Honestly, um, I think if th I want this and I think it's going to happen. Um, I really want music therapy to be a master's only education. And the reason I say that is just because it was too much to do as an undergrad. It was way too much. And taking that board certification as like a 20 year old is just ridiculous. Like, I don't understand how they expect, like, I, I mean, I was ready for it, but, like, I, if I think about, like, other people, it's just, like, when you're 20 years old, it's sometimes difficult to take a concept and apply it, and, you know, when, that's another reason why I think, like, medical schools, the average age to get in is 24, because, like, when you're in your early 20s, that's when you start to take textbook answers and apply them to clinical-based questions, um, and it's really hard for a lot of people to do that when they're 19 20 21 years old so um so i really fingers crossed hope that music therapy becomes a master's only education because like it's just it's just too much you can't expect a young individual to be able to comprehend information in that specific way and if they can't comprehend it for the exam how are they supposed to provide services so that that's what I have to say about that um future music therapy what's another well if if music therapy becomes a more master's focused program then we can really focus on the population that you want and that you like and I really hope that getting a master's in music therapy like the requirements are um clinical care because then if you're a CNA for example when you know what populations you like to work with, you'll know like what your focus is going to be. You'll know what a facility looks like that you want to work in. And then you'll see what facilities you work in you don't like, what populations you don't like. So then hopefully like if it becomes more of a master's program, we'll be able to focus our education more on the population and the facilities we want to go into. Um, because I personally didn't, that was another thing like, getting my bachelor's degree in music therapy like I had no idea what population I wanted to work with and I didn't have to know like you know I didn't need clinical care hours to become a music therapist at the bachelor's level to get into that program so like I think that that needs to be said you know <laughs> so anyway um Maybe a bachelor's degree in biology, a bachelor's degree in psychology, a bachelor's degree in behavioral health, and then you can get your master's. Oh, oh, you can do a bat. You can definitely do a bachelor's degree in music too, and then you can get your master's in music therapy. And you need so many clinical hours. You could do a CNA. You can be an EMT. You can volunteer at a hospital. That's what I think. So, so I, and I'm kind of basing this on the requirements to get into medical school because as a music therapist, you are a medical professional. That's. The future I see and hope for in music therapy and I think I definitely will get my wish with the um, it will be master's level only fingers crossed <laughs> okay oh uh, yeah and I'm grandfathered in so like I, <laughs> but that, I mean that's obvious <laughs> okay what are the steps to being able to practice um, in the US we have, we have like four more questions, so I'm hoping I can get it done in this video. Um, steps to being able to practice music therapy in the U.S. Uh, well, first things first, you definitely need to find an accredited university, and you can find that at the AMTA website. Um, and, and that's like really important because a lot of schools out here will say that they'll give you a music therapy degree, but um, colleges lie all the time. I mean, college universities are a business, um, so yeah, like, any school can offer a music therapy program, but you really want to go to um, a certified university because that certified university is going to help give you the resources to pass the board certification exam.
Um, so that's step number one, find a certified university. Then, obviously you're not taking the exam just yet, you wanna pass your classes, and you really wanna take like control of your clinical experiences. That's what I did. I, my professor did not like this about me, that I tended to tell her where I wanted to go for my clinical experiences, but, um, but that's what I did, and I, recommend everybody does the same because like then you're going to get out here in the real world and you, nobody is going to plan these clinical experiences for you so i planned out like where i wanted what facility i was interested in um what population and i kind of went from there and i gave her a list of five places <laughs> And yeah, so that's that's what I did for clinical experiences. Obviously, you want to pass your classes. Um, you really, you really want to hone in on those musical. You, uh, for me, I if I was talking to my previous self, um, Megan, hone in on your musical skills and focus on biology, chemistry, math like the sciences just because like I did, did medical music therapy um and, and that is what I ended up doing like I got actually one of the highest grades in my science courses <laughs> and um I did really well um musically as well so the, and those are the two main areas that you want to focus on cl like class wise uh, we talked about clinical experiences. Oh, and then the internship. You need to get an internship after you finish your coursework. And that's something, too, you really want to be in control of, uh, which, yet again, I had, like, 20 places that I wanted to go to or that I was interested in. And, yeah. that. And, and then, after that, you want to apply for the job. And, like, don't apply for... They say you're supposed to apply for jobs, like, three months prior to finishing your internship. Like, no, no, no. You need to apply for the job based on the physical year of the establishment you want to work in. So I wanted to work in a hospital. I applied for jobs in September to start in January, even though I wasn't finished my internship or I wasn't at the three month mark at that point. And, um, and you know what, it all worked out because you can get hired for a position without your bachelor's degree. Um, and especially in my case, like the positions I was applying for, like they started remotely in January and then they didn't actually start until June. So, um, so like I said, it worked out for me, but yeah, so that's kind of it. Honestly, moral of the story, uh, what are the steps to practicing music therapy in the United States? Moral of the story is that you need to be in control of your own education because nobody is going to do it for you. Moral of the story. What is the most common type of music in music therapy? It really depends on the population. I worked with older adults um, especially acquired brain injury, and they love classic rock. But if you work with geriatrics, they might like World War One, World War Two songs. If you work with children, they might like Disney songs or children's songs. So, um, so it really depends on the population. And I recommend uh, not <laughs> playing music that you actually like. So, like I food for thought. I actually do not like classic rock music, but I gained appreciation for it because my clients really liked it. However, when I went home, I didn't listen to anything. I listened to rap. I listened to pop. I listened to classical because I didn't want anything to do with classic rock. And that's really important because like you don't want to get burnt out musically because that happens to all of us. What is the difference between music therapy and other bedside music? what i don't know what do they mean by bedside music like playing music some patients used to have like boom boxes you know or radios and honestly like that's kind of the whole that's the reason why you're paying me all this money that's so that's the reason why i ask for all this like you know that's the reason why my rates are so high because i'm not playing music for entertainment purposes and that's what like a radio or an alexa or a boom box or the tv like all of those things are playing music for entertainment purposes i am not i am playing music 
for medical reasons. If I was in a didactic placement, I would be playing music for didactic practices. If I was in psychiatric, I'd be playing music for psychiatric purposes. Um, so that's why, that's why I ask for a lot of money. And that's why if you're a music therapist, you should ask for a lot of money because you're not playing music because the patients like it. You're playing music based on a practice and a clinical reason. Your, your music is geared towards an objective. It's geared towards a goal. Um, if I was playing music for entertainment purposes, you can pay me $10 and call it a day, but you're not, you know? Um, so that's like the real difference is it's a clinical practice. Uh, last question. What's the difference between music therapy and listening to an iPod with headphones? Do people actually like still own iPods? <laughs> okay, listening to any pre-recorded, I'll say it again. Listening to any pre-recorded music, you are listening to that for entertainment purposes, not clinical purposes. Um, I'm here, I'm providing live music. I'm doing like in the moment, I'm adapt, yes, I plan the sessions ahead of time, but I also adapt them as the session moves and I'm doing it for the patient's objective that's the whole point it's a clinical practice I'm a medical professional I am NOT a performer I am NOT a musician God knows I do not write my own music I hate improvisation <laughs> but I will do it if there's a clinical purpose and that's like the main point um I don't take insurance like I'm, I'm just saying like blanket general I don't take insurance I charge 30 to 60 dollars an hour because I'm a medical professional if I was doing a gig or an entertainment you know I don't know playing guitar at um Howl at the Moon for example uh sure pay me a hundred dollars for um two hours you know, that's 50 an hour, but pay me $100 to play a two hour gig because I'm playing, mu not only am I, I'm, I would be playing music I like, I would be playing music that's en for entertainment purposes, you know, and there's no treatment plan, there's no goal, there's no objective. So sure, you pay me 50 an hour, you know, to be do a gig. But if I'm doing a music therapy session, you better be paying me more because there's more that goes into it. And then also too, I have to write notes and I have to go to meetings and I have to do treatment plans so like <sighs> music therapy is a clinical practice listening to pre-recorded music is for entertainment purposes they're not the same and they will never be the same so that's the story friends <laughs> we didn't talk about advocacy at all um so i'll touch on it briefly um when you advocate for yourself as a music therapist it's really important to do that at work and at work only you do not need to advocate for yourself on the street you do not need to advocate yourself to your significant other you do not need to advocate yourself to your family or your friends but you do need to advocate yourself to your boss and the director of the program slash establishment because I don't want anybody to be furloughed I don't want anybody to be pushed by the wayside and I don't want any programs or uh, positions to be taken away because people get confused and think that pre-recorded music can suffice you know and it really it really can't um i i'll mention it one last time i'm a medical professional i'm using music for a clinical reason um and there's no music out here that can do that there's no one that you can pay less to be able to do that um, and that's the moral of the story. And it's really important for businesses to know that. But your family and your friends and your significant other, unless they're paying you, they really don't need to know. <laughs> so that's the story, my friends. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always message me down below directly. And I will see you guys later. Bye.